So guys, this is Fluid Film after five years going into year six on this 2017 Colorado. Um, my dad and I got this thing up in the air and we kind of started looking at everything and the first thing out of my dad's mouth was, it doesn't need it. And it looks the same as it did last year. <laughs> I had to wipe off some spots because I thought it was rust. It wasn't, it was for the, the fuel filter, the knob, it's yellow. <laughs> Couldn't find any rust. So I'll take you guys around and show you. Guys, there's nothing, I mean, there's no rust on this thing. I, I'll take there's, you around and show you. a few you. spots the size of a quarter, maybe. Right, but this is after five years. Um, so this truck last year, I sprayed with Surface Shield. Um, this year, I'm probably gonna hit it again, just because, first of all, he lives like 45 minutes away. I have it up on my lift and it just makes sense for me to spray it because this truck's only here like once a year. So I'm going to hit it again with Surface Shield, but realistically guys, I'll, like I said, I'll take you around and show you. I'm 50-50 on whether this would even need recoded again. But what you have to remember is this is the fifth year for this, these lanolin coatings on this truck. So prior to me using Surface Shield, I was using fluid film on this truck. So there's base layers of fluid film that have been topped with Surface Shield. So if you were to go out buy a brand new vehicle, just use Surface Shield on it, I would be a little apprehensive um, waiting a full two years before you recoat it again. I think I would evaluate it in a year and see where you're at and see what it needs. There's a few spots on the running tubes where the tires flow uh, Here, flow up and you hit. Need, you need to like talk to the camera and, and say that. There's a few spots on the running tubes on each side that they're... Talk, so, talk at the camera. So that when you look at it, <laughs> it has a few marks on it, but we're talking, it's on that side. It's on the driver's side. You can look at it, but it's nothing. It's nothing. The thing is, it's the... The tubes he has, like the tube steps that he has on this truck, they're steel tube steps. They're not stainless steel. So if they're going to rust, they, I mean, they're a type of metal that is going to rust if they're not protected. So I've seen tube steps like this, like three to five years that and they're just- holes in them. Yeah, they're, they're holes in them. They're completely gone. And he's finding little, maybe a couple little specks of rust from rock chips and things like that. I mean, overall, there's not much really to show you guys, unfortunately. All right, Dad, so where were we at here? So I've looked pretty much on the whole underside of this thing and a lot of it's just paper or plastic and the only rust I found is maybe up here on a bracket. On the bracket? And there's one a little bit on this side on that bracket. But I mean the rest of this, you guys I look can't around really here. I not find any except uh, I mean, some really small dime size marks up here on a few bushing, maybe up above on the on the tires. You can get in here to see it. Yeah, the, the just top here. side of that ball joint, like the a little bit on the the shock there. But I mean, guys, overall, that's peanuts after five years of being in northern Ohio. You think it's from the southern part of the country? Well, other than the dirt, I mean, you can't really tell that, you know, you've even done anything to the truck. The thing is, you could, you could take all this stuff off of here if you wanted to, like, take your hand and wipe some of that off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's thick. But, I mean, underneath it looks brand new. I mean, there's a... You wipe that off on the tire. So yeah, I mean, up in the bedsides, the rockers, guys, nothing has changed. Um, as far as surface shield and fluid film and the other stuff that's out on the market, you know, obviously the surface shield works. Um, the thing is, guys, the front of the axle has always been sort of like a problem area for um, wash off. And as you guys can see, you know, there's uh, still a bunch of it on here and as far as rust is concerned, it's pretty friggin' minimal. Um, there's a little bit on that spring, on those uh, bracket for the U-bolts, but overall, guys, I don't know what else you could expect out of a product. I mean, this is, uh, like I said, 
I can only say it so many times. This is about as good as it's ever gonna get. So I did go through and spray his truck again, like I said, just because this truck isn't at my house that often. It was already on my lift. Um, but with that said, I really didn't spray all that much on it. I only really sprayed about a quart. And typically that's about half of what I normally spray on this thing. And I just basically concentrated on the high wash off areas, places like that. But overall, I didn't use much product on this. All right, guys, so I just finished up spraying. This is where I'm leaving everything for the year. And guys, there's no real changes. Um, everything looks pretty much like it did when it rolled in here. The only thing I really did was I focused on like the front edges of all the cross members, um, just because, you know, the, the water spray and things like that, just like the front axle, um, I think those are things that going forward, yeah, even with surface shield, you're probably gonna have to touch them up every year. But as far as the rest of this stuff under here, guys, I really didn't spray a whole lot, heck of a lot under here. You know, the back side of everything is still well coated. So just to save product, I didn't see much of a need to go hog wild and, you know, spray, th you know, two, three quarts on this thing. I only sprayed about a quart on this thing. And as you can see, I mean, there's so much on here. The reality of the situation is it probably needs more product like I need a hole in the head. All right, guys, so I got my truck up on the lift. Um, this truck has had one less year of winter exposure than what my dad's truck had that I just showed you in the last shot. So his truck has been through five winters going into six. This one has been four going into five. So again, like I said, there's one difference of winter exposure, his truck versus mine. So keep that in mind when you're looking around at things. Um, but with that said, let me uh, take you around and kind of show what's going on underneath this thing. Not a whole lot's changed. All right, guys, so this is four years going into five on this truck. This truck was completely hosed down with surface shield, just like my dad's truck was last fall. So both trucks have had surface shield on them for a year at this point. This is what they look like. Um, Overall, I'm pretty happy with the amount that's still here. Um, some things that I notice right off the bat is actually the oil pan. So if you take a look at the oil pan, you can see you know, that spot on the oil pan right there in front of you. I scratched that portion away. So there's obviously still a coating on the oil pan. And typically when I was using fluid film in this application, because the oil pan would get so hot, it would just run and fall off. The surface shield is doing, seems to be doing a better job of sticking to hot surfaces than what fluid film did. Um, as far as the rest of this thing, guys, as you can see, everything's still really, really wet, really slimy, and there's still a good level of protection on everything. Um, there's no major rust developing anywhere. Um, the only thing that I have noticed is like the front of this cross member looks a little dry. So I'll touch up the front of this cross member and that's what pretty much what I'm going to do for the season. Um, you can see right there, there's still some coating there that I, you know, rubbed away, but it's just not as slimy and gooey as, you know, what's over here that doesn't get as much water spray. So my plan is I'm actually going to not coat this thing this year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the high wash off areas. So I'm going to hit, you know, the front of the axle. Um, that cross member that I just showed you. But overall, guys, I am not going to coat this thing this year. Why? Because this car is under my control. I'm willing to do this with my own vehicle that I keep my eyes on. And if something develops or something starts to rust, I can coat it, you know, throughout the season. Uh, for you guys, you know, obviously most of you guys don't have a lift. You don't have the luxury of getting this good of a look at your undercarriage and this much access at any given point. So for you guys, I would still go one year, every year, just recode it. The thing is you have to remember too, I'm, you know, four to five years in on this coating. So the coating on the frame is getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And at certain, at a certain point, there's just diminishing returns as far as performance, because if the coating's a quarter inch thick or a half inch thick, Either way, it's gonna work. So that's kind of where this truck is getting to. It's just getting to the point that there's so much on this thing that I don't think I need to coat every single year. We're gonna find out. So like I said, I'm just gonna to touch up the front of this, touch up the axle, 
and basically send this thing on its way. The other thing is last year, um, you know, we did the comparison test between uh, this is surface shield on this side and then the other side of the frame got wool wax. And if you look, you know, still nice and slimy, still obviously, you know, there. Um, I had some commenters that we'll, we'll get into this a little bit later, but I basically had people, and when I say people, I mean fluid film dealers coming on my channel and telling me fluid or surface shields full of solvent and it dries out and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And if it's full of solvent and dries out, how come I can do this a year later? So we're going to get into more of that in a minute. Um, I know we did the, the axle as well. I don't see a huge change um, from one side to the other on the axle. Both of these sides look pretty friggin' similar to me. Um, the nice advantage about you know, surface shield, obviously it sprays a little bit easier than wool wax does just because it's thinner. Um, you don't have to heat it. So as far as one of these coatings being drastically better than the other, it's hard to say guys, they all work. Um, I don't think there's any one of these three that you can look at and go, oh, that, that, that product flat out doesn't work. They all work. Um, it just depends on really, you know, what you want to spend, what products that you basically want to deal with as far as, you know, heating it up, trying to spray it, things like that. So if you want to use fluid film, use fluid film. If you want to use surface shield, use surface shield. Um, that's completely up to you. This is the wool wax side of the frame. So this side of the frame over here, this rocker panel, this is all wool wax. If you guys remember from last year, and let me set this light down. Um, same thing, still nice and gooey, still on the frame, still doing what it's supposed to be doing. When it comes to these products, guys, like I said last year, they are a lot like motor oil. And what I mean by that is this, you could be like me and be a hardcore mobile one guy. You might be a hardcore Pennzoil guy, but if we both change our oil like we're supposed to and maintain the vehicle correctly, chances are we're gonna get great results with both products. These are kind of the same thing. So this is me spraying my truck in real time for this year, guys. Um, all in total, I sprayed my truck for a minute and a half. The one thing you guys need to keep in mind, and I know I've said this a couple times already in the video, but you have to be diligent about reapplying the product at least the first three or four years that you own the vehicle. After that point, you have a coating built up enough on the chassis and on the frame of the vehicle that you could get to the point where I'm at where I can take a look at it and go, you know what, there's enough on here. I don't have to hit it again. The thing is, the guys that get the best results are the guys that are the most diligent about maintaining the coating. The people that um, come back every single year have the best results. And as you guys have seen, I've been maintaining my coating and my results have been great. So something to keep in the back of your mind. You're not going to go three years in between coatings and have good results. If you're diligent about doing this every single year, you'll have great results regardless of the product. But because I have so much product on the vehicle, I want to try and push the envelope a little bit. I want to try and go two years without, you know, fully coating the vehicle. So as you guys have seen, I hit the transmission cross member and the axle. That's the extent of what I'm coating this year. So over the past couple months, um, my professional career has changed and I figured I need to let you guys know about this because I've always been very honest, very open with my audience and I didn't want to run into a situation where I'm trying to hide something from my audience. Some, you know, a third party finds out about it, shoots a YouTube video, tells my audience about what's going on, blah, blah, blah. I didn't want that to happen. So what has changed is my professional career. So. I took a job at Blaster. So I am a social media content and product specialist. I am now no longer wrenching all day every day. So I am sitting behind a computer, creating social media posts, things like that. And I've only been at the job for about a week at this point, but I wanted to get this out there just so you guys are well aware that I do in fact now work at Blaster. Um, 
with that said, my opinion on the other products that are out on the market has not changed. You know, fluid film is a good product. Wool wax is a good product. Surface Shield is a good product. I have never once flat out said fluid film is a garbage product. That's simply untrue. And that will not change. That is one of the things I made sure in my confidentiality agreement with them. I'm allowed to openly speak about any products that are out on the market. And I'm allowed to talk about things on my YouTube channel. And I wanted a distinct separation between my YouTube channel, professional business, you know, professional career, if you will. So you won't see any of this going on. This channel, as you know, it is going to be pretty much the exact same way that it's always been. But I just wanted to let you guys know and let you guys, you know, make sure you guys were in the loop as to what was going on. So yes, I work at Blaster. My opinion on the products that are out on the market has not changed. Surface Shield is a great product. Fluid Film is a great product. Wool Wax is a great product. Going forward, one thing that may change with this channel is I don't know that I'm going to shoot any sort of like comparison videos using Blaster products. What I mean by that is this. You have to put yourself in my shoes for a second and you have to understand that when I shoot a comparison type video, the results that I get are the results that you see. I don't fake anything, just like the pole test that I have out on the, the telephone pole with all these different undercoatings. If you think I'm full of crap, go strap some scrap metal to a telephone pole and coat it, come back five months later and see what it looks like. Not that hard. With that said, I don't know going forward that I'm gonna be doing any comparison videos with Blaster products because from the audience's perspective, now that I have told you that I work at Blaster, if the Blaster product comes out as the best product in my comparison video, the first thing the comments and the audience is going to say is, well, you work for Blaster, of course you're going to say it's the best. On the flip side of the coin, if I shoot a comparison video and the Blaster product is not the best, then I piss off my employer. So I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. So with that said, as far as Blaster, like me shooting a penetrating oil test, not gonna happen because I'm either a corporate sh labeled a corporate shill by my audience and just pushing who I work for, or I piss off my employer. Either way, I don't win. You know, either way, I'm pissing somebody off. So, with that said, it's not gonna happen. I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of what's going on with my career because. I don't want you guys finding this information out from some third party. Like I'm not trying to hide any of this. Um, with that said, you know there is there is some stuff online that I've heard about Surface Shield versus Fluid Film versus Wool Wax and stuff like that, and we're going to get into that right now. So, like I said, I've always been very very honest with my audience, and that's why I told you guys that you know what I'm working at Blaster now. Um, I got to keep my lights on too. So, you know, everybody, everybody's trying to uh, get ahead in life. And to me, that was the next logical step. Whether you agree with that, that's up to you. But with that said, um, one of the things that's happened over the past probably six or eight months is I've had multiple fluid film dealers basically talking smack on me, the products that I use, um, the procedure that I have, things like that. I'm not here to name names, guys, as far as who said what or whatever. It's water under the bridge. But all I want you guys to do is stay curious. This channel exists and this undercoated content exists because I stayed curious. What I mean by that is when I sprayed fluid film the first time, what was that, like five years ago at this point, you know what happened? I had people down in the comment section going, that stuff's garbage, you should be using NHOU or wool wax or this, that, or the other. So you know what I did? I made a video where I tested it. And then after that video, you know, sort of got a decent amount of traction, I had a, another list of stuff to test. So that's how I started all this undercoating testing, because I stayed curious. So when you see somebody talking online, whether it's me, a fluid film dealer, or anybody else, stay curious. Prove what they're saying. So with that in mind, I've got multiple fluid film dealers, like this isn't just one or two, like this is between three and six probably that have reached out to me, have bashed me, the products that I use, the procedure that I use, things like that. 
the results really don't lie. Anyway, one of the things that I keep hearing is Surface Shield has full of solvent, it dries out, it's this, it's that, it's the other, don't put it on your car. And it's like I said, it's all from fluid film dealers. You know, I'm not a fluid film dealer, guys, so maybe I'm not qualified to, you know, see what wet and not dry is. But that was where we sprayed the Surface Shield last year. Remember, this side was Surface Shield, the other side was Wool Wax. Looks pretty friggin' wet to me, um, but you know, like I said, I'm not a fluid film dealer, so maybe I'm not qualified to uh, determine what's wet or not. Uh, next thing is, they keep telling me it's full of solvent. Well, like I said, guys, stay curious. If it's flammable and it's full of solvent, why am I not dead? So if you're a fluid film dealer, that's fine. I really don't care. Don't go out on the internet and spread lies because somebody's going to call you out on your crap. Oh, look at that, still lit. That stays lit a little bit longer, but I mean, come on guys. It's a propane torch in a five gallon bucket. If the stuff was flammable, it would be on fire. Stop it. This is what I'm saying, guys. Stay curious. If you see somebody running their mouth online, portraying themselves as an expert, whether they are or not, test it. Stay curious. So guys, taking a look at the aerosols for each product, the aerosols, all three of them are actually flammable. Doesn't matter if it's surface shield, wool wax, or fluid film. Do you know why? Because they use a propane propellant. So it says right there at the bottom, danger, extremely flammable liquid and vapor may cause flash fire. The wool wax can, extremely flammable aerosol. Fluid film, danger, extremely flammable aerosol down there at the bottom. So they're all using a propane propellant. The product itself is not flammable. Once the propane flashes off and goes out into the atmosphere, the product that is left behind is not flammable as you guys just saw. So this is what I'm saying, guys. If you see somebody out online talking smack on whether it's fluid film, wool wax, surface shield, motor oil, oil filters, um, or cars or anything, just stay curious, test it, figure it out for yourself and see if these people are full of crap or not because that's really, at the end of the day, how this channel got to be where it's at. That's how I'm gonna leave things, guys, for this year. Um, as you saw, my truck's not getting sprayed. My dad's truck, really, quite frankly, him and I both looked at it, it got a half-ass spray just because I'm not around his truck as much as I'm around mine. So. That's how I'm leaving things for this year, guys. I'll have links to the fluid film, the wool wax, the surface shield, um, all the applicating guns, uh, aerosol cans, all that stuff down in the uh, description as well as the pinned comment down below. So as always, guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. You want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.